Welcome to Doghouse Talks. Today we're going to be covering the topic of data dog billing. But to start, we're going to introduce our host and our special guest for the day. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, so my name is Jesse Eddy. I'm one of the account executives um, here at RapDev. I've uh, been working with Datadog Solution for a little over six years now at this point. Um, so, you know, I've seen a lot of different customers implement the solution and, and also seen a variety of the use cases and kind of common questions that pop up. Uh, so because of that, we've, we've kind of molded um, a, a talk session together uh, that outlines some of those common themes for, in terms of questions that customers have when it comes to scaling uh, the use of Datadog effectively. Um, and I will let Nick, our special guest, introduce himself as well. Hey there, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Pacellio. I'm a solutions architect over here at RapDev, uh, working primarily in the uh, cloud and observability space. Uh, I've been using Datadog for uh, nine or 10 years at this point. Um, I've had a lot of experience rolling out the tool and utilizing it in large scale infrastructures. Um, I was one of their largest customers at, at one point in time. And um, in this period of time, I've uh, deployed Datadog probably on a couple hundred thousand machines and tens of thousands of applications at this point. Um, so looking forward to talking to everyone about how to uh, do some cost attribution. Yeah, we're really excited to have Nick here. Um, Continue on the introductions. Um, RapDev is a Datadog Gold partner, and we've really seen it all and done it all at this point. Um, we've helped companies ranging from Fortune 1000s to small blockchain startups implement Datadog to better be a better effectively ob uh, observe their machines. Um, and we also have had about a hundred and more. Datadog rollouts during our time um, existing. And if you go on the marketplace, we're about half, if not more, of the marketplace at this point with our integrations. So yeah, I'm gonna pass it over to Jesse to give us a little recap on the last webinar and flow us into our topic for the day. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and th those who aren't as familiar with with RapDev, um, you know, we are a gold partner of Datadog. We really specialize in, in implementation and consulting services around the solution. Um, so I definitely implore anyone that has more in-depth questions particular to uh, your environments or, or, you know, the pro types of problems you're dealing with, um, definitely feel free to email us, call us at RapDev, and uh, we're happy to talk with you through, um, you know, those, those questions that you have and see if we can help. Um, but to quickly recap um, the last webinar, just because it really does set the stage for the, the billing and, and kind of bill back model um, that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and that was around Datadog tagging. So um, from a tagging perspective, what we covered last, you know, last uh, webinar was really about, um, first of all, the goals of centralized accessible tagging documentation. Um, building out a very consistent and strategic, uh, you know, tagging uh, document that allows the teams to have the same nomenclature, regardless of the types of, uh, you know, infrastructure applications you're monitoring with it. Um, so that means, you know, consistency across on-prem, cloud, uh, container-based environments, um, so that your use of, of Datadog kind of uh, scales more effectively, um, and it also scales to, to various teams. <clears throat> And that brings us to the second one, which was around reducing the sources of tags as best you can. So, um, you know, a few of the suggestions we had were, you know, when uh, when possible, always leverage things like Kubernetes labels or uh, the cloud native tags uh, and have a centralized configuration management strategy, um, which can help you kind of reduce the total number of sources of tags, which helps with that same problem, which is consistency. Um, and then ultimately, once you have the tagging strategy and you have a consistent way of applying that tagging strategy, monitor your tagging strategy with Datadog. So uh, ensure everything in your systems are tagged properly within compliance of your, of your um, you know, a single strategy. And that can help you kind of more proactively maintain and uh, manage your Datadog deployment um, to keep everything in compliance, um, which is particularly important, especially on the subject of today's call. Which is um, which is bill back. So a few of the tags we talked about last week that you can leverage for things like bill back. One would be a simple project ID or a team um, or an owner tag. 
Um, or if you have unique billing IDs within your within your company, you can leverage that uh, you know unique ID as a as a tag. Um, but it's very important that you first have that consistency of how those tags are applied at the agent and you know metric collection layer, um, so that then we can use the the tools that are available within Datadog um, to actually start um, you know slicing and dicing the the information from a billing perspective. So again, you know, skipping past, uh, there's a lot of a lot of um, work that goes into making sure those billback tags are applied, um, which is, I would say, the big kind of chunk of the work. Um, but once you do have those applied, a, I would say, commonly uh, maybe forgotten feature of Datadog for some some enterprises, um, and something that we suggest all of our customers to take advantage of and have enabled in their account is this usage attribution functionality. Um, so I can just uh, take control real quick to, to show everyone how to navigate over to usage attribution uh, and get that set up in your account. So in, in terms of navigating the usage attribution, you'll need to have admin access or access to your Datadog billing uh, information, um, which will then allow you to show up this plan and usage tab, uh, at which point, um, once usage attribution is something you've enabled, um, you'll need to reach out to Datadog support to get this feature enabled. Um, but once it's there, then you can start to um, slice and dice the data by various tags. So uh, originally, you'll, you'll start to determine the types of tags that you want to filter on. Um, in our case, we're choosing application and teams in this demo environment, um, but you can choose up to three tags. So uh, it's definitely important um, to, 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 to pick really wisely in terms of what tags you want to use because you can't go above that three count. Um, but you can you know, definitely manipulate the data uh, using those tags once it's coming in. It's not going to immediately populate, so it won't retroactively populate your usage data. Um, so it takes about a day, uh, sometimes less, for the usage attribution tag to um, usage attribution feature to actually uh, be usable and, and kind of um, helpful. Um, but once, you know, that day is passed, you'll start to see um, the tags pulling in here. So one thing you'll notice, um, obviously, I'm just sorting by team right now, is if there's not a tag available with a team tag, you're going to have um, a fair amount of usage that's not, you, you're not going to be able to build back. Um, so that brings us back to that last conversation about tagging strategies and how to implement those earlier into your build process, that's where that becomes super, super critical. Um, but you will be able to start slicing and dicing all of these different product lines um, and all the data related to it. Additionally, for those uh, finance teams that generally work out of Excel, you'll want to take advantage of the download as CSV uh, to help them um, you know, actually manage and, and split up the usage. <clears throat> it's important to note, so um, you pick the timeline here, you probably go with the previous month, right around the time you've actually gotten your bill, so you can start to slice that up based on the individual metrics and do that, whether it's in Excel or another reporting function. Uh, but it is important to note, not all Datadog tools work with this solution. So there's got to, we have to find ways to, you know, help you slice and dice billing data that's not uh, in this usage attribution. And we're gonna get into that, uh, you know, real shortly here. Um, another feature you can take a look at, by the way, is just percentages. Um, some customers we work with actually leverage the percentages. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you have a certain percentage of infrastructure hosts related to a certain team, you could hypothetically leverage those percentages to calculate the bill across maybe non-tagged uh, non products that aren't in this usage attribution. But we do have some strategies that we're going to just walk you through now um, for uh, for slicing the the data that isn't in this feature. So to highlight those, <clears throat> span indexing and ingestion, log indexing and ingestion, uh, and real user monitoring. Those are three uh, of the the bigger products of Datadog that don't currently pull into usage attribution. Um, we didn't we don't have time to cover. There's a few other tools that, uh, that actually don't pull into usage attribution, but they're lesser used within Datadog at this point because uh, they're newer to the market. So these are the ones that we wanted to focus on today. 
you know, next slide. And Nick, you want to take it from here? Sure. This is the part where I talk. Um, so there's uh, the first thing that we really have to do here in order to actually be able to slice this data uh, is again, be sure that we're collecting it in, in one way or another. Uh, so we have a few things highlighted here. Um, the first thing is how do you actually go about tagging your logs? Um, there's a few different strategies. So for example, if you're in a Kubernetes cluster and you're utilizing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, labels as tags and you're sending logs directly from those containers, um, that metadata will be associated with the tags. But what happens when you're running an agent from a host and you're collecting something like Nginx access logs? Uh, how do you actually associate tags to those logs without um, altering your log pattern to include that information? Um, a lot of times there's, there's good reason to not want to change the default log pattern for a lot of third-party applications like Nginx. So certainly inserting data like team names and business units, um, is, it's difficult to manage and it gets a little clunky. Um, so there's a few strategies that we can uh, do here. So I'm actually just going to share my screen uh, just to show a few things. So the first thing that we can consider um, is, oops, um, is agent-based um, config file logging. So when we're running a Datadog agent on a machine um, that's producing a log file that we want to read from, um, we can use the, the logs configuration. Um, there's a bunch of additional parameters that are listed below the general example. So what this looks like for us uh, is if we have this config here, uh, we're looking for the Nginx access log and we can name our service here. Uh, we'll wanna name our source so we get uh, some advantage taken of those kind of automatic log processing pipelines. Uh, but then we can also add that metadata um, down here. And this, this can be controlled by your configuration management tools like uh, Ansible and such. Uh, so you can inject these fields onto your log as the agent collects them. Um, so that's that's the first set that we kind of want to take a look at. Um, Non-agent-based log collection uh, is a little more difficult. So what happens when you have an application that's sending logs directly to the API, the data log logging API, uh, or you're sending them out to some log shipper like Logstash or Vector? Um, how do you actually manage the teams and the tags and all the other associated um, pieces of information that you wanna be able to slice on. Um, there's a few different ways that we can do this. Um, something that we wanna consider is utilizing Datadog reference tables. Uh, so within Datadog, you have the ability to upload a CSV file or have it pulled from AWS, uh, where you can kind of store and version that. Uh, and effectively what you're doing is you're providing a key table uh, where the key is the value of a log field um, so in this case, we could say something like service, and then you could additionally map out other columns that tell Datadog when it receives a log and it finds that key present in that field to inject some other additional data into the log itself. So using reference tables, uh, you can receive your, your service of, of my web proxy uh, and have that associated to the team name of, of Nick's team and the contact of Nick at rapdev.io and, and so on and so forth. Um, so if reference tables um, aren't an option or it's not uh, something that people want to maintain, or there's a number of reasons to um, have some other uh, available option. The other option, uh, if you're sending directly from an application to the Datadog API, uh, is actually just include that information in the source log. Uh, so if you're sending JSON, um, you know, there's no reason that you couldn't also include a log field that says something like team and business unit and other associated um, information. Um, so let's see, uh, the next thing we want to talk about is once we actually get some of this metadata into Datadog, how do we actually start using, um, this information to determine the, uh, estimated cost or the cost attribution, if those, uh, pieces of data aren't present in the cost attribution tool. Um, so there's, there's something present within Datadog internals, um, there's estimated usage metrics that are presented by Datadog and they're under the Datadog namespace under estimated usage. And what this is gonna give you is some metrics that are available for APM. So items like index spans and ingested spans. Uh, and this is gonna be present for logs and RUM as well. And as well, some of the other products like security logs and that sort of thing. Um, there's actually a, a cool little feature within cost attribution that's kind of a, a little bit of a hidden thing. Um, once you set up the tags, um, like Jesse showed in the tool to be able to slice and dice that data, 
What you'll actually get for APM and logs at the moment is an additional metric that says index spans and ingested spans by tag. And what we'll see here is that service and team are tags that are populated on this metric that we have established in our cost attribution tool. So then if we come onto a dashboard here, we say uh, Datadog estimated, uh, first we learn how to spell, estimated usage, um, and then we look for APM spans by tag, and then we split this out by team. We now have an aggregate of logs submitted, uh, or sorry, uh, index APM spans over time broken out by team. And then of course, this can be broken out by service as well as an additional layer of aggregation. Um, so you can utilize this on a dashboard with some additional algorithm calculations um, via using formulas to do some estimated usage. Uh, and, and in a little bit, we'll show you uh, kind of an example of, of using this on a dashboard. Um, the other interesting thing that we can do is, you know, we have these for logs, we have these for APM. One thing we don't have estimated usage metrics for by tags is for RUM. Uh, however, within the logs, APM, and RUM tools, Datadog allows you to generate metrics based off of the data that's coming in. Um, so if we were to come into the RUM panel and generate a metric, what we could do is set our metric name that says, um, you know, something like uh, RUM usage by team. And then we would just define a query in order to um, pull in everything. And then we're just going to do a count of those. And then we're going to group by, oop, it looks like this account doesn't have any RUM coming in. Um, so we can do, let's use APM as an example here. Um, So if we start looking at APM traces that are coming in, again, we're looking at a count of everything and then we can group this by team. So when this metric is produced, uh, we're gonna see that there's a metric that's gonna be stored for Datadog's retention period of 15 months for metrics. So this is gonna just be a count of everything broken down um, by the team that's submitting it. So as long as you're sending this metadata along with your RUM traces as well, you can generate some of these estimated usage, uh, estimated usage metrics based on exactly what is coming into your Datadog account. The only caveat being is you can't name them Datadog.EstimatedUsageMetrics. Uh, they don't like it very much when you do that. Um, in fact, they tell you not to. So um, these metrics, if they're not present, can be generated just by using some of the metric generation features that come within Datadog. Um, so I think at this point, uh, once we have the data and we're able to slice it and dice it and generate the metrics we actually need, uh, this is when we're gonna start talking about how do we actually keep our billing in check over time. And I think that brings us to the next slide. Yep, all right, so so how do we now keep our, our billing in check? Um, and before we, we, I guess, get to, to a few of like the dashboards and monitors that we've developed in the past uh, to kind of help with that action, um, I also wanna mention um, you know, naturally, uh, what Nick and I were just showing you from a billback strategy, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily cover every use case. Um, so sometimes we have to customize the different ways of, of doing so. Um, example being maybe potentially on the logging front, if there's certain data not contained in the logs that can help us map to a team. Um, we might need to define, um, you know, a different way of either uh, collecting the, the logs in a different way, modifying the sources, um, or uh, even having separate indexes kind of configured um, to help kind of manage and track those costs. Um, but <clears throat> once we do have the metrics coming in, we're generating custom metrics, we have tags uh, associated with those custom metrics, or using the Datadog billing metrics, um, now let's build customized ways of, of, of monitoring um, and tracking and visualizing on that data. So um, I'll share my screen. We can walk through a couple of those options. Awesome. So, uh, what you know, quickly put together this uh, visualization in terms of of log count by ingestion index by team, as well as the APM index and ingestion um, estimates by team. So this was based off of the metrics that uh, Nick was was actually just kind of generating there. Um, it is important to note, though, if it's not one of the Datadog 
um, bill estimates, um, estimated metrics, then it's going to take about a month for, for the generated metric to populate. Uh, because once that custom metric is, is created, that's when it's going to start tracking. It won't go backwards and populate it after the fact. Um, so in this case, we can easily um, kind of determine what logs are going or are, are coming from what team, um, the index they're actually going to. So if you have multiple indexes, if there's a 15 day, a seven day, 30 day, um, you can you know slice it out by that, as well as the volumes, um, whether it's indexing um, or ingestion volumes. From a dashboard perspective for, um, you know, the wider costs, um, we've created a, a, you know, a cost estimation dashboard that would be customized to every uh, individual customer we work with. Um, and this dashboard is going to take into account your committed usage uh, and then your on-demand usage. So depending on the contract type you have with Datadog, if it's a drawdown or if it's a committed in overages or if it's an hourly overage model, um, we modify some of the calculations within these widgets um, so that the, the math does add up. Of course, you know, it's not an exact science. It's not going to always add exactly to uh, what your bill is, but it gives you really good information and data um, so you can track in more real time what you should expect uh, and, and maybe uh, get in front of the finance team before a bigger bill. If there's, you know, maybe there's a spike one month because uh, you're using more logs than than normal. But, you know, at least you can track here and, and kind of keep it in, in line. Um, and then you can also take more actions based off that data. Um, so in addition, within this dashboard, you can see right now we only have like four monitors set up in our demo account. But those monitors are set on um, a few of the different billable metrics. Um, so anytime there'd be a spike in infrastructure monitoring or uh, your API, API test that you're running on a, uh, in a given month uh, or browser tests, you can uh, be notified and actually proactively, uh, you know, maintain and manage that. So, um, for example, we look at the browser test. I think I triggered a bunch of browser tests earlier today. So, yeah, it, it's actually going into alert state now. Um, you know, that means if we keep at this rate for more hours during the month, we're definitely going to go over our commitment for the month. Um, so, I might want to go in and modify, you know, what. Um, what uh, locations we're sending these tests from or the frequency we're sending in tests so we can get back in line um, or from a logging perspective. You know, everyone knows, and, and I think next week we're going to talk a little more about logging without limits, but um, Datadog makes it really easy to control uh, your pipelines there and, and dynamically change it throughout the month. Um, but the that really is only useful if you're doing it and you're taking action based on, you know, maybe spikes that you didn't uh, didn't exactly forecast um, during the month. So you get this alert, you create a run book that says, hey, go in and, and change these controls within this pipeline. Maybe it's uh, excluding them completely, or it's changing the index, or it's, um, you know, creating a, a percentage filter um, for exclusion, things like that. But um, yeah, so that's, that's the main, what we were trying to show here. Um, you know, it's also important you can take advantage of Datadog's like anomaly functionality or forecast monitoring to help actually um, plan a little more effectively based on the data that's available there. And you can start to see these trends over a longer period of time or a shorter period of time as well. So we, uh, we kept it to about that 30 minutes there. Um, but we definitely want to keep time for the questions. Yeah, so we have a question and it says to get the billing regarding hosts from like infra host, if P99 model is used, how, how do you get the number of hosts using Datadog estimated usage host metric? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Avik is, is really asking um, if they're, you're in a high watermark contract style, um, how, do, how do you calculate and drop that top percent um, in your total estimate. Um, we So this this bill back dashboard that we had uh, walked through earlier, it's not doing that uh, that math in the in, in it today. We would have to work with the, um, I believe there's some functions available in there that might allow us to modify the, the widget to represent that dropping of the percentile. But generally how we're doing or working with that after the fact is through a downloading of that CSV and uh, and leveraging you know more functionality within Excel um, to 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 kind of more uh, properly come up with your billing estimates. 
Yep, and I can actually show an example of um, what you're talking about there, Jesse. Just uh, need one second to get it here. So just gonna grab the screen real quick. Um, so when we talk about um, building dashboard panels, uh, one thing that we can do uh, is actually add markers here. Um, so since you're committing uh, to a certain number of hosts, uh, and let's say you're committing to uh, a thousand hosts um, during during a given period, you can actually use a marker to set uh, you know your high water mark here. Um, this isn't really a value that you can use to do some kind of percentile calculations and such. However, you can lay out your usage, uh, your estimated usage for hosts. Um, and then kind of sum this up, and then we could do something like a, uh, a roll up. Um, hello, there we go. Uh, so we can roll up uh, a sum of the hosts that were used um, over the course of, let's say, one hour and look back over the past month. So um, at this point, uh, we are looking at oh, that's an interesting roll up. Um, so we're, we can roll up through some additional functions with a threshold here uh, that shows us our actual usage. And then the other thing to consider too, uh, when you're doing this sort of thing is that there's gonna be different types of hosts that you're paying for. Um, so there's, there's hosts that are just running the agent. There's APM hosts that are actually submitting APM data. And then there's network hosts that are running the network checks. And then there's some additional ones like profiling hosts and um, I think there's like one or two other ones. I think uh, security related hosts for thing, um, agents that are running workload type security. So you won't want to map these out independently because these are going to represent different billing rates in your account as well. Uh, but generally speaking, I would say that in order to keep an eye on exactly uh, what your host allocation looks like here, uh, you would want to put a marker uh, as a threshold on that chart in order to keep visual track of that. Uh, but then like Jesse said, um, definitely want to do some analysis in the usage attribution tool as well as the CSV that's available. Okay. Um, and I'm just going through some of these questions here. Uh, Pavel, Pavel asked, uh, when do you think there will be estimated usage metric for log archives? So good question. Um, we don't have much <laughs> visibility into Datadog's roadmap on those estimated usage. Um, metrics, but um, you know, from a log archiving perspective, if you're archiving, depending on how you set up the archives, you might be able to get that data using more of the ingestion billable metrics um, and it, have it broken out by you know either unique index or um, whatever way like you're determining what you're going to be sending to those archives. Um, Though then again, I, I guess I am a little curious if you can type a follow up and uh, what what billable metric are you talking about from a log archive perspective? Because um, I don't think there is a, a a fee related to archiving, just an ingestion fee. I think the the majority of the cost would ultimately be on the back end storage mechanism um, that oh. you're utilizing. So like your S3 or your Google storage. Um, However, that's outside of the context of Datadog. That's just a cloud provider cost. Um, so there's probably some additional ways to monitor that. Um, you know, at least as far as AWS goes, uh, the Datadog integration will pull in uh, budget type metrics as long as that IAM permission is given. Um, there's also ways to monitor the size of an S3 bucket. So if you are able to do some calculations of um, what your storage cost for uh, S3 rate is, um, you know per gig per month, then you can also chart that as well using some of the metrics that are populated from the AWS integration uh, regarding some of those storage mechanisms. Yeah, and uh, Pavel actually followed up with uh, usage of long-term long, uh, log archives. So I believe you're talking about more the, the online archiving um, functionality. So the 15 month retention of Datadog logs um, in platform. Um, so that is, you know, obviously it's a newer feature to Datadog. Um, we'd have to do a little more exploration on um, some good ways to track that today before that billable usage comes out. Um, but I would imagine there is a point of, you know, when you're pointing it towards the, the online archives itself, um, there might be some data we're able to track um, as, as a custom metric, kind of similar to how we were tracking the, the other log custom metrics before. Um, but I don't want to give you that as a definite answer, but we, we can do some more exploration and definitely have a follow-up uh, conversation with you if you'd like. Um, 
next question was, um, and I answered this in the chat as well. Do you do you all have a list of recommended tags for chargebacks, costing? I think uh, the ones we use today are cost center and team. Um, so it, that's a question that's very unique to to your particular business. Uh, we've worked with companies that do everything from you know uh, bill back ID, where it's a very unique identifier, uh, like a just a, a non readable like uh, ID, um, to others that do by business unit or by team or by uh, you know. Uh, very similar to team owner, um, or just by application. So you're billing it back to, uh, and you're relating it back to like the, the 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 money you're able to collect from a given application. Um, so those are a few different ways. I'm not sure if that helps to answer your question. I think we have another one that says, how do we get the billing dashboard, the one we saw in the demo, it, is it chargeable? Yes, so we um, we actually provide we can provide that dashboard to uh, to customers. We just would um, want to have a conversation with you, work with you. Um, we do provide uh, Datadog optimization projects um, where we're kind of doing a full review of your Datadog account, um, your use of logs, and we're providing some suggestions for kind of improvements to make sure the value is being derived. Um, and then as part of that, we do include that dashboard and we customize that dashboard to your particular commitment, um, but always happy to talk, uh, you know, directly with any customers. If you want to reach out to us, um, we can talk with you about getting that dashboard in place. Um, and there's, you know, otherwise we can get that over to you. And I think we have time for one last question. Um, how would we correlate ingested logs at a cost to, co to a cost? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, um, certainly happy to answer this. Uh, if you do want a little bit of additional detail, we did touch on this a little bit in the presentation. Um, so, you know, uh, there's probably a little bit more that you can get out if you do go and take a look back. Um, so there's gonna be a few methods uh, and it's ultimately going to depend on how you're sending your logs. Um, so if you are using the Datadog agent to read log files off of a machine and then have them submitted to Datadog through the agent, uh, you can actually tag them at the log file configuration section in Datadog. So you can add those team or business unit or cost center tags uh, right there. And then they'll get added to that log as a field that's submitted by the agent. Um, so at that point, if you uh, break down the cost attribution tool by that particular tag, you know, be it team or business unit or such, uh, it'll actually populate into the estimated usage metrics for logs uh, with the by tag um, metric namespace. Uh, so that'll be available, I think, in about 12 to 24 hours after you split that usage. Um, there's also the ability uh, that we showed to make custom metrics off of logs. So what you can do is uh, generate a metric that is just a count of all logs that are ingested um, and then split that by the team tag or you know, whatever tag it is you want to track it by. And then that'll produce a metric into your account uh, that's considered a custom metric that you can use to map out onto a dashboard as well. Um, it's definitely a little tricky depending on how you send your logs. Uh, if you're submitting them directly to the API, uh, the Datadog logging API, there's a good chance that you'll have to modify your logging format to include that information from the source. Um, there's also the ability to use the Datadog reference tables uh, so if there's a key piece of information in your log, um, you know, even, even something like service, um, you could use the reference tables to map service out to a team. So as the log goes through the log processing within Datadog, it'll pick up that metadata through the reference table. And then you can use one of the additional methods like splitting the cost attribution metrics um, or by generating metrics off of the logs. So it's a, ultimately the answer is there are multiple ways, but uh, it's it's ultimately dependent on how you're sending your logs um, and, and which strategy you'd want to use there. Cool. Well, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today and uh, keep an eye out for our next episode, which is November 10th. It's going to be about logging without limits. I want to thank Nick and Jesse as always for helping and presenting. And feel free to sign up on our landing page to get the recording of this webinar and we'll get it uploaded to the same landing page a little bit later. So you can check it out there as well. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining and sitting in and asking questions and hope to see you guys on November 10th. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone.